government does whatever it wants all the time. Let's do this. We know the debt ceiling is at the top of the news cycle, but first, I think it's important to note that there are Americans still being targeted by an agency that has been targeting its political opponents for quite some time now. All the hearings, all the grandstanding, all the subpoenas, nothing changed. The IRS, who lost all credibility after this. President Obama stated that there was not a smidgen of corruption in the IRS targeting. Ms. Lerner. Do you believe that there is not a smidgen of corruption in the IRS targeting of conservatives? On the advice of my counsel, I respectfully <clears throat> exercise my Fifth Amendment right and decline to answer that question. Oh, because I remember they were furious at Trump when he pleaded the Fifth. But nearly a decade later, the agency, who still relies on fax machines, obviously, they not, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. The IRS confiscates your wealth with the warrantless authority of what some countries aspire to have in their dictators. They have the sole ability to decide what is and what is not taxable simply by the discretion of whoever may view your audit or your income statements. If you have a question, <laughs> forget it. You can't even get somebody on the phone to figure it out. Without warning or even a, a court order, they can reach right into your bank account, deduct funds, seize assets, and even throw you in jail for a debt you might not even know you owed from years ago. Now imagine that level of power in the hands of your political opponents. It's pretty scary. This year alone, the IRS has made headlines for expelling whistleblowers, they're protecting the president's corrupt son, and even conducting house visits, house visits, to an independent journalist who might threaten the liberal narrative. Can you imagine that? What kind of world do we live in where the power of the federal government, the warrantless power of an agency tasked solely in taking your tax dollars based on laws already passed, can use that political and, and powerful type of intimidation to stop people from publishing things or force them to publish something else? I got to say, I am beside myself with the fact that we have investigated this time and time again. And this is what the American people are so bothered by, is the simple fact that no matter how many times we haul these people up to Capitol Hill, like Lois Lerner, they never get charged. There's never any consequences. Sometimes they step down. Oftentimes they get their pension back. We saw that with the FBI. The DOJ equally is corrupt. But no matter what Americans do, we are always at the end of the shaft. We never, ever, ever get made whole. And sometimes when things are proven wrong, the very elected officials who are sought to help us, who are asking those questions, are just saying, hey, sorry, our bad, and life goes on as normal. These people's lives are left in complete ruins. We've seen this at the DOD, too. There is absolutely no accountability for the very people that are supposed to be held to the highest standard of law. They do whatever they want all the time. It's unbelievable to me. Well, joining me now to discuss is one of those independent journalists who has been targeted by the IRS, the main author of the Twitter files, Matt Taibbi. Sir, appreciate you being here. Thanks for having me on. So as I, I reread all the stuff that happened to you, you published the Twitter files, or at least a good chunk of them. Then you get a knock on the door. The decision apparently from the IRS to, to come to your house was made on Christmas Eve. Well, the decision to come to my house apparently came on January 27th, but the the case was opened on Christmas Eve 2022. Wow. So they cut and, and so these agents, they come to your house, they knock on your door. What goes from there? Well, I, I mean, at first I thought this happened um, the day I testified on the Hill uh, before the weaponization of government committee. I came home from a train trip. Uh, that evening, I learned from my wife that uh, the IRS had been to our door. And at first, I thought it had to be a coincidence. It's just too silly to think that they, it was related in any way. But um, after consulting with some people, I decided to, to inform the committee in case, you know, there was some kind of thing where witnesses were being intimidated. I didn't comment about it then because we didn't have any information. Now we have some, and we learned that the case was open on Christmas Eve on a Saturday, which coincided with the release of a big story. So, you know, the optics are aren't, aren't, of it aren't good. It's possible it's still a coincidence, but it, it seems remote. But 
so so they open this case. What is the? I mean, this is my general problem with the IRS too. Is that they don't need a basis to do the things they do, including confiscate money. But what was the basis for them opening this? They can't say political targeting. Ostensibly, this had to do with um, my 2018 return, which they said was um, had been re electronically rejected over concerns about identity theft. Uh, and that's w really what made me nervous when I heard that the first time, because I didn't recall ever hearing uh, the IRS complaining about that. It seems like I would have heard about it across um, you know, the intervening period. Even in their response to Representative Jordan, they don't claim that they said anything to me about this for the last three years. Uh, moreover, I don't owe them any money, so the fact that they came to my house uh, over this issue seems pretty strange, no matter how you look at it. Again, theoretically, there's some kind of logical explanation, but I <laughs> don't see it yet. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, excuse me for not giving the IRS the benefit of the doubt at this point. But um, it, here's the thing, though. Is, so you publish the Twitter, fast forward a little bit, you publish the Twitter files, and January 27th, they're like, hey, we got some serious questions. You inform the committee that you that you may or may not be a, a part, you know, a subject to attempted intimidation. What does the committee do? What does the IRS do at that point? Well, the committee, I, I think it was, it was great what they did. They, they sent a letter to uh, the IRS commissioner basically just asking, why did this happen? Um, what was the predicate for opening this case? When did you open it? Um, what did you do? And they answered some of the questions like they, they gave us uh, or sorry, they gave the committee some information. Um, yeah. And but it was only partial. Like they didn't explain what the context of it was or who ordered it or why uh, and why they suddenly, you know, on a Saturday on Christmas Eve in 2022 became overwhelmed with the desire to rectify a very strange minor uh, concern um, that they hadn't done anything about for three years. Now, they say this was because of because the pandemic made it impossible for them to visit sure. my house. But why, that doesn't mean they couldn't have sent me a letter. It's just all very weird. Yeah. Or they could have sent you a fax. I mean, they still use that over there. The, right. the So then has there been any movement and you don't have to get into the specifics of the investigation on you personally, but has there been any movement? Have they sent you any, I don't know, other letters, any more door visits? Where does that stand? Are you in trouble? Not in trouble? Is it being closed, opened? My understanding is that, I mean, I, was, I received a notice of resolution shortly after, uh, at the end of March, um, right after the committee sent out its letter. So my understanding is that I'm not in trouble, but you never know. Also, mm -hmm. I have a significant return that they haven't given me, so I don't know what that means either. Um, but <laughs> You know, th there's a lot about this stuff that's mysterious. And my thinking about this isn't so much that um, I want to rail against the injustice done to me. But, you know, these th this is a rare opportunity, I think, to try to find out some answers about why does this kind of thing happen? And uh, it's possible that the committee has enough, you know, authority to try to get some of those answers out, which I think would be good for the American people, right. basically. But the, the other thing, Matt, and one of the things I, I like about your position is I have no idea where you stand politically. I don't know who you voted for. I don't know anything. Like, and I've, I've tried to find it. I'm like, is this guy like some sort of conservative nut? No. So, you know, you are one of the last remaining true independent journalists. So if we have an IRS that's willing to go after you simply because you published a story that was worldwide news, what kind of uh, message is that sent? And how many people have reached out to you and said, hey, like Matt, I appreciate all the things you're doing. I have to back away from whatever story we're doing because I can't afford to fight the IRS. Well, right. And that's the concerning thing. And, you know, for, for reporters, in terms of my politics, I always try to keep that a little bit closely held because, you, you know, it's really not a, an issue for in terms of the reporting. You, mm -hmm. you don't want to distract the, re the audiences with whatever your personal opinions are about certain things. Uh, but if other reporters see that this is the kind of thing that, that can happen to them or that they can end up in some kind of a jam just because they do a story that mentions certain government agencies, that's a major disincentive to doing it, <laughs> which is, which is which what is they want. Problem. Yeah, right. Which is what they want. Yeah. I mean, maybe, right. maybe, maybe that's the answer is, I mean, like they can't send an IRS. To, well, now that they're going to have 89,000 new ones, uh, maybe they could send one to every single independent journalist door. But Matt Taibbi, we appreciate you staying honest. We appreciate you reporting what you see. Thanks so much for having me on. I appreciate it.